Our honeymoon in paradise continues. The, the heat can help a lot before it is breaking constantly. Now it's easier to feel it doesn't break so much. Still, it's a pain. We're going to replace the stainless steel wire for the staysail. Now, this track, I'm pretty sure, hasn't been opened in 20 years. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to splice our new wire onto this, slightly different wire side too, and we're going to have one person push and pull. For me to splice, I need to have this much, this much wire. Now, this is the first time I've ever done this. Steve from the Yacht Rigger explained what to do, and it seemed pretty simple. So for about a distance of four or five inches, you unpick one of the stays and you cut out the external wires leaving the core. And on the other stay, you unpick the wires and then you cut the core wires for a distance of four or five inches. And then you simply put them together and re-twine the wires back. Once you insert the core into the cage of external wires of the other stay, it's simply a matter of a couple of turns of your hand and the wires retwine themselves back. It's really quite simple. And then we hold it with a very, very small piece of electrical tape because we don't want it too bulky, otherwise you won't get it through the track. The important thing to remember Go. is the pusher does all the work Go. and you've got to make sure the Go. wire does not twist because otherwise Go. that splice will just come apart. Wow, LA bloody lulia. Got it. This is how you make tangs. Big stick. Trouble is you gotta get the bends right at the right spots. Especially the S bends. Because these these line terminators for the ducks, the dynema, are so wide and I don't want them to come in contact with stainless steel, so I want to put nylon washers um, on either side. So they've got the tangs have to actually go wider. So here we go. one's pretty good so here we go that's not too bad oh and I should thank Steve he owns this little part in the marina and um, he said yeah no worries new device my god I was just standing on it trying to drill it before it's not good with stainless steel because it bites and then it spins around and gets you in the ankles let's go set up this fake shroud This is where my pretend chain plate is and so I'm just trying to duplicate where this lower shroud will go and the angle it makes with the tank. Um, here's the line terminator. I just want to make sure that the line terminator is close to 90 degrees to the clever spin. Here it looks pretty good. So what I've done is I've double nutted it here and I've tightened this nut onto that one. Really really pinched it tight. So. That ought to hold it. In fact, that's what was on the ring before. Mind you, they did grind the end off, so that would have stopped this nut falling off anyway because it's buggers of the thread up at the top. So because my thread's quite good and there's a bit extra, I'm going to bugger the thread by putting, uh, by denting it with this hole punch. And that'll do it. So if this nut ever does go free, it'll stop there.
I have lots and lots and lots of friends in the boatyard. Look. Actually, here we go. This is Harry. Harry's helping me out with the rigging. Harry's holding this line. It's roughly on the end of the spreader. Gee, Harry, bloody pay attention. You're a little bit off. He's, out of, he's off by an inch and a half, but that'll do. Top stuff, Harry. Keep up the good work. Uh, he's holding the line so we can measure the angle and make sure I have uh, got a good angle for the line terminator. So let's check it out. It's looking all straight. Looking all good, looking all good, looking pretty good actually, looking perpendicular. I think I'm happy with that. Top stuff, Harry. You're the best line holder ever. I've got lots of friends here at the uh, marina. Larry the ladder. Kerry the tent. Well, that's about it. Top stuff, Harry. Well done, mate. Oh, Harry's always fucking around. Today, what we're doing is the spreaders are on and we're trying to work out the angle that the upper spreader is going to be set at because we want to divide the angle. So my spreaders are a bit different um, in that they pivot. Um, some, some boats are like this. Uh, a lot of them, I guess, are fixed. I oh, look, I don't know the proportion, but... Because um, we're using ducks, the Dyneema product, and we can't actually pinch the line, or it's not a good idea to pinch the line, I've got some guy wires like this. I'll, I'll rig the guy wires up. So, see, we've got this one here. So I've got some of these, and I've got a little um, turnbuckle here to tighten it. Um, this setup is going to be up for this spreader, uh, up for the upper spreaders as well, um, but instead of being 90 degrees, which this one is, this one is going to be dividing the angle of this line that goes all the way up, and this line that goes to the top of the mast. So this angle here needs to be divided equally so that all the force is pushing this directly in. If this is a little off, for example like this, then this will want to tend to push this spreader up. Um, and if it's a bit lower, it'll want to push this spreader down. So we've got to get it roughly right. Uh, it's not too crucial. You can be out by a few degrees. That's what I've been told by the rigger. But I was thinking I'd get it right. Now, I was told that at this extension, it should only be up about three degrees. Uh, sorry, three inches from the top. Now, three inches is about here. And I can tell you now, that's close to a right angle, and that's more of an acute angle, so that's not good enough. So I'm thinking it should be more like that. And according to my very, very um, unusual mathematical calculations that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, I worked it out to be about a six inch run. And guess what? It is six inches. Wow, that's three things I've got right this year. Bloody good. Anyway, so I'm gonna get a piece of board and just measure there and there because I don't have a protractor and I'll do the same for the other side and then we'll rivet these guy wires just to keep these spreaders <laughs> oh, you know what Margarita's doing <laughs> she's getting rid of all the water that's um, in the little tent and it was getting all over her Margarita what are you doing She's entertaining us. She's entertaining me. I don't need television. It's all good. So we all understand that. I sort of understand it. So hopefully you understand that too. Top stuff. How polished are these spreader ends? That's what I just did. But the yacht rigger made these up. How good is that? Just for the Dyneema. All right, here we go. Pretty good. As you can see, I've got a trusty protector here. This is my upmarket one. The other one was cardboard. This is bloody good. All right, so we know 
this side is good so that's a good angle there let's see if this matches here before I do the bottom guy wire and that's good there too now you might ask why these are such thin wires and how can these possibly withstand the loads given by these shrouds well the fact of the matter is these are non-structural these are basically just to keep this spreader at this angle because the whole idea is provided that angle there is the same as that angle there the tension that way and the tension this way that balances the net force so it doesn't move the spreader up or down and what happens is the net force is straight down into the pin and into the mast so provided you get the angle right within a couple of degrees because even if it's a little bit off the force is such a small component of this tension that it'll be bugger all and these wires will handle it these are these beautiful spreader ends um, trouble is we've got stainless steel in aluminium and I just know after I don't know how many years it's going to be seized up so what I'm going to do normally I use Duralac but even then you've got to change it every one or two years and that's not going to happen so I'm just going to use this butyl tape butyl rubber tape I don't know what it's really called is it called butyl tape I don't know but roofers use it and apparently after 30 or 40 years it's still sticky and it's still good so I'm going to wrap around that hopefully it'll break the contact between the stainless and the aluminium I'm also going to seal in between the spreader end here and what's left on the spreader and um, we'll see how that goes I've never tried it before but you know it's worth a shot look I could silicon them in but that's just going to be a bugger pulling them out later so we'll see how this goes because this is sort of sticky but it's not it doesn't sort of set I think we might have a problem here so we need to do a little bit of cutting as you can see see these extension plates I don't know what they're called or toggle or whatever I've cut into it a little bit uh, here not too dramatically just because they were actually touching here on this shackle so if I ever wanted to remove this this would have been pinned with the stay sill uh, stay and I wouldn't have been able to open it and then if I did open it then this would have dropped down and then I wouldn't have been able to put it back in so I've cut that out a bit but I'm not sure I've cut it out enough and also another thing I noticed is when this was down see how I've cut these off these corners off this pin was actually rubbing on that and heavens forbid if that was such force there and it was a little bit over this uh, cotter pin over here it could have sheared off if it was an angle it could have just snapped it off and then I wouldn't even had a cotter pin to hold this pin in so what I've got to make sure is this is not sitting hard up against that shackle pin it's sitting up here somewhere where it's all free the way it's supposed to be so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use similar triangles to make sure that this angle is enough to get to the chain plate on the deck so using similar triangles what we're going to do is I'm going to measure out say from the pin say four feet and I notice there's an offset here of what one and a half inches there which shouldn't be in uh, included in it and then I'm just going to simply measure this in that maximum line and I know it's a bit bodgy but now I'm just going to err on the side of caution and make it a little bit larger so we're 20 and a half 20 and a half feet sorry 20 and a half inches minus the offset of one and a half so 19 inches in four feet so for every four feet this goes out 19 inches so I've just got to measure the total length of the mast and make sure he can make that chain plate okay so we know for this four feet it goes out 19 inches which is a bit more than one and a half feet the length from here is 33 feet 
let's just say it's 32 feet. So how many four feet go into 32 feet? There's eight times. So in theory, as the law says, there's going to be eight times 19 inches. That's where the stay is going to land or the minimum distance. It can go out further, but I'm looking for the minimum. So eight times 19, well, let's just say that's one and a half feet. Eight, one and a half is 12 feet. Well, I've only got 12 feet. And because this is 19 inches, I know it's not going to fit. So I'm going to have to cut away that a bit more and I'll make sure this pin doesn't cut, touch this as it goes down lower. Because you just never know. I mean, I don't know much about rigging. This is the first time I've done the mast. But if something is not in line and that's putting a force down on this pin and that's causing the pin to have a moment on it and that cotter pin, sorry, that, yeah, the cotter pin, if that cotter pin's right on the edge, it could just snap it off and then the, the, the boat jostles around a bit, the pin, the remainder of the pin falls out and then we're in real trouble. So I'm just thinking, trying to think ahead. Now I might be overly cautious, but I don't like the look of that when it is jammed up against the shackle. It's just going to lead to problems later on. So I want to eat a bit of this meat out, but not too much. I mean, ideally I should put a drill hole and have a perfectly round hole and then grind to the... Um, grind to the drill hole but all my drill bits are just toasted and I don't have a lift to the hardware store and I've got to get this done now so grinder it is I'm afraid. Okay so we've got less than a foot and a half distance out for this four foot run and because there's 32 feet there's eight of those foot and a half eight times a foot and a half is 12 feet to give us that distance to the chain plate so therefore because this is under one and a half feet by well, a couple of inches at least we got plenty of clearance so we don't have to go to the calculator we can just do it with our head bloody good well maybe i should go to the calculator just in case so i've just cleaned this up a bit so this can freely articulate now it's not supposed to go down that far but i now know it's going to definitely go to a, its its position its free position so that should be all good <laughs> 